he would always tell me I wasn't going to make it in this. And I was just like, mm. I was like, all right, well, that's, that's, that's good. That's the motivation I need, you know, from the time I started it. I want to start climbing the ladder and beat everybody that he beat faster than he beat. So I was like, well, this is the first guy I want to fight. Then I was like, and I was like, and since I know you like to build your fighters pad records, I was like, yeah, tell you what, why don't you, if you're not nervous, why don't you give me one of them guys who want to pad their record? Because I promise you, the full rules, it's going to be a different story. I had to call him, I fight for free. I said, I fight for free. I said, one of your guys. I said, you find me there, I fight for free. Dorian Price, um, from Baltimore, Maryland, in the U.S. Um, that's where I was born, but been a nomad for a long time. Different, um, you know, really can't say wasn't all bad, wasn't all good, you know, but growing up in Baltimore, it's, 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 it's interesting for sure, it definitely builds character. Um, when I was younger, I remember my father telling me, you know, you survive, grow up in Baltimore, you, you can make it anywhere. You take the same lessons that you learned in Baltimore, apply them to everywhere else, you can be successful in anything. Just had it tough, you know, everybody was just, just tough. I mean, my, I had um, my older cousin, he was a Marine from Vietnam, and, you know, just, Tough, tough guy just actually wanted to go to Vietnam just so he could get some medals. So, you know, I just come from like a tough family, just, yeah, tough, tough upbringing. I remember just, uh, yeah, just different, different things that most people would think would be like kind of, you know, abnormal was kind of normal for us. I remember just out at the park and all of a sudden, Shootout breaks out, everybody's shooting and, and shit going crazy and everybody running. My little brother's out there, he running, everybody scrambling just to shoot out, coming home and uh, telling, my, telling uh, my pop, like, bang, got to you know, just I was playing ball, they got to the shoot out, da 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 da. And I'm just sitting back there, cool as can be, talking about, mm, well, you survived, so that's a good learning lesson. End the story. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> I don't know, I pretty much was going to be a fighter from day one. I think I was just bred to do this. Uh, it was just a matter of me just finding it later, but I think it was like just the hand that was dealt for me. It just, I didn't realize it until I got a little later in the card game that that was the hand I was going to play. I remember switching schools um, in the sixth grade. I went to, uh, actually seventh grade, I went to a new school. I remember my father sitting me down before I went, first day. And, you know, I'm thinking he's gonna give me some sort of like talk and uh, pep talk about school and stuff like that. And I remember him just looking with a straight face saying like, all right, look, this high school work. Hey, this is a new school, you're a new kid, so you won't have to fight somebody. So this high school gonna go down, you know? You gonna fight the dude, don't, don't, don't get no fight with no punk, Pre preferably find the biggest dude and the baddest dude in the school because you're going to need to earn a reputation or you're going to have a rough time at this school. It's going to be a rough year. And he was like, so don't worry. You're probably going to get suspended. You're going to get, you're going to, <laughs> you're going to be out of school for a couple of days. And he was like, but here's the alternative. Here's how it's going to work. You have options. Either you can spend that suspension time uh, doing chores and working <laughs> or you're going to have, you're going to spend it like having a nice day. And you working if you run out there and get your ass whooped. But if you win, <laughs> your suspension gonna be all right. So then it was funny, he just went in and actually tried to show me some moves. It was bullshit, but nonetheless. So I remember going to school and uh, ended up getting into it with this dude. And like the usual tell the dude, you know, meet me at three o'clock. <laughs> we got out there at three o'clock, everybody, you know, made the scene at the lunchtime. You know, I, I kind of started with bumped into him. I kind of scoped out to figure out like who is the like, you know, who I who, who seen I had the most respect and whatnot. And uh, so yeah, three o'clock, we went out there and uh, yeah, we got the scrap. And mm, 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 boy, that ain't, ain't good for me. I must have picked the motherfucking Golden Glove boxer or something. Cause I remember he just whooped my ass 
like a motherfucker. But I caught some, I, I caught him with some good shots. But I think it was after that day, I was like, hmm, I might be all right at this. Cause I could take, cause I realized I could take a hell of an ass with him. But it wasn't until late in life that I started fighting around. 18 is when I first got into it, seriously. But that was the, I guess, the unofficial start. My little ass whooping. And my first uh, fight, I mean, I started back before anybody knew what any of this really was. I mean, and especially when I should say in, in, in the States, uh, it was 97. I uh, fought a kid named Sean Seagrave from uh, Phil Nurses. A guy named Phil Nurse, uh, who, who since become famous for training, like Ice GSP and John Jones. I remember the first thing thinking to myself was like, going to my instructor was like this, just thinking to myself like, oh shit, man, like damn, this ain't like no street fight, man. This dude actually like been training to whoop my ass, man. It ain't like, it's in, like fuck, man. Like, I remember thinking like, shit. I mean, like I go out there running, punch him in his head and shoot me ain't looking or get the one up on him. They're like, shit, man, he gonna know when it's time to go. I'ma know when it's time to go and fuck. He been training to whoop my ass. Like I been training to whoop his ass, and, and uh, and that was it, remember? So I remember just being nervous as hell going in there the first time. And then, you know, first time he hit me, I just remember thinking like, oh shit, this ain't too bad, man. This is just, just all right. I remember ended up winning uh, by decision. Uh, and it was a good fight up until the end. I, you know, the last round, I ended up catching him with uh, three good knees, just just jumping, jump knees and stuff, and, 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 and uh, caught him one right in the throat. But uh, it was a... Uh, Awesome fight, and that was probably the one that let me know, like, shit, man, I, I, I can really, like, be something at this, you know, like, like it was, it was my, it was my calling, because I was still in a situation where, you know, I was kind of a knucklehead. You know, I'm not the type of person to say, but I got, like, you know, role models or, or heroes or things like that, but I'll tell you, someone that I respect is, like, Bernard Hopkins and, uh, Another person that I respect, uh, it's probably one of my better better friends, one of my best friends is his name Kevin Ross. Uh, just them, cause like for for what they you know what they accomplished and and what they the struggles that they had to overcome to get where they are. Cause a lot of times people just see the end result, they don't see the shit you know that you know you have to go through. There was a time where I'm up being. You know, in Vegas with Kevin, we would live in a gym, literally, and roaches and shit everywhere and stuff, getting up training and stuff like that. So those, I guess those are the people that I look up to. I mean, any, and I guess you could put anybody in the category that's, that's come from fucking uh, a situation where, you know, the odds are against them. I mean, shit, and, and, they, and they make something of it. Um, Experience was it, was it was interesting for me. I mean, at first I really didn't want to. I mean, it was kind of like, well, um, I had a buddy of mine uh, that was kind of like acting as my manager at the same time, was you know telling me about the show and saying like I should try out for it. And I was just like for shits and giggles, like yeah, yeah all right, whatever, you know. Uh, I just dabbled in MMA just because where I was at the time, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunities for Muay Thai and stuff. And so, you know, MMA was starting to come around and uh, got onto the show and it was, uh, it was a good experience. I mean, it was, I, I enjoyed the camaraderie. I enjoyed the fact that just being able to be somewhere for six weeks and not have to worry about like nothing. Just almost like the outside world doesn't, ex doesn't exist. I mean, almost like you locked away and confined in a situation where you just training with, you know, uh, other people who just hungry, you know, and so it's like it was just no no distractions. For me, it was a perfect situation, you know. Um, aside from the cameras, I just couldn't get used to that. That was the biggest thing. I remember coming off the show, and uh, you know, I like, couldn't find nobody. wasn't find anybody to help and stuff like that. And uh, my own for my own team it was almost like they kind of turned their back on me and shit, you know. But like that's. For me, it was like, ah, whatever. When the first time I like somebody turned me back on me, so I was kind of used to it. Like, like no one really kind of schooled me on what the fuck, you know. Like at that point, how much 15 minutes of fame is? Everybody wants a piece of you and shit, and you know, everybody like fucking, you know, you got fucking 
girls that wouldn't spit on you all of a sudden, you know, somehow managing to find your number and people seeing you on TV, associating TV with having money. I remember having uh, people, I'm not gonna mention any names, calling me up, talking about, yeah, we seen you on TV, you know, then when it hit you up for the money thing, like, it automatically some magical way, like being on TV gave me like more money. Nah, I broke his ever and shit. Far on the other end. And this is out of the blue. And I remember him sitting there saying like, you know, yeah, it wasn't like, hey, how you doing? It was, just, it was heard you got your ass whooped. Embarrass yourself. And I remember thinking to myself like, all right, well, you know, here we go. It's going to be like a, a pep talk or something else, something else. And he's like this. And I just remember after that, the next phrase was like, mm. You ready to quit now? You ready to give up? You know, told you you wasn't gonna make it. You know, you you know you should you, you should you should have listened, should have stopped a long time ago. I mean, that was like the nail in the coffin for 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 really hardening my arm and really like you know getting myself together. That that whole experience was because I just remember it's like fuck it, it's it's me in this game and me alone. I can't depend on nobody. I can't trust nobody. I can't you know. Uh, take anybody word for nothing. I mean, I had whatever I get, I had to get on my on my own. And that was cool because I just went back and resorted back to life lessons I had learned growing up. My best friend was doing, you know, since I was 16, he'd been doing like life in, in prison. One day, you know, he was talking to me about, you know, uh, about opportunities and things like that. And this was from someone, you know, he was a phenomenal football player at the time before, you know, you know, certain choices took him a certain path. But, you know, he was just talking about, and he was just asking me, what was I doing? And so on and so forth. And I was like, I'm not really doing shit, you know. You know, he had known about the fight and stuff. And like, you know, I'm like, I don't know, man, this game. He's like, you know, you need to go somewhere where you're gonna have no distractions. So that my brother, we chip, chip, you know, put it together. And got a one-way ticket. I remember my brother telling me, you know, like it was a one-way ticket, and then you know he's like, you know, you get your ass a one-way ticket. That way, you don't have no option. You can't fail. He's like, and the only way your ass can come home is fight and earn your way back. He's like, because he's like, because if you, he's like, don't get it to uh, a round trip ticket because that's an out. Because you have an out. If shit don't go right, you always have a return date. So I ended up in Thailand and those things, and that's why you know, and, and, and being here, I guess a lot of people, I don't know if they misunderstand me or you know, don't know too much what they, I don't know what to think. I mean, it's great people here, surrounded by beautiful people. And, uh, um, but sometimes I think I'm maybe just misunderstood because, I mean, everybody has a reason for being here. Everybody's sacrifice. I, I, you know, I guess everybody have a story. You know, my story ain't no better or worse or glamorous or not than anybody else's. If I'm not training, I'm pretty much in my room. I mean, I like, I enjoy the confinement because I mean, I feel like for me, fighting, one thing I guess that made fighting good for me is that, you know, that I love it so much is you can't rely on anybody. You can't blame anybody. If you start getting your ass whooped, your homeboys can't help you. If 50 Cent was your entrance music, 50 Cent ain't gonna jump out the speakers if you start getting your ass whooped. I mean, it's you and it's all, you know, and, 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 and you know, and that's, and that's, that's what I love about it. And that's why I like to, you know, constantly be get comfortable with my, by myself, you know, almost to the point of like, sometimes it does drive me insane because I, 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 I want to put the most amount of pressure on myself that I possibly can to almost to the point where it just drives me to insanity because I'm not playing checkers. I mean, I'm fighting. So, you know, insanity is just part of it. 10 years from now, you know, God willing, I'm still, I'm still around, you know, and, still have the ability to be in the sport, like to be, uh, you know, have been a champion, like to, more importantly, like be in a position where people can look back and be like, you know, and, and, and look at me and say, you know, shit, man, you know, he he never gave up. Whatever happens in my situation, you know, like, like I said, I like to be a champion, like to go out there, and, but more mostly I just wanted people to look back and be like, you know, fuck, you know, like he, he, he made it, you know, through perseverance.